Yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Downtime with Downstar, episode 72. And uh, we're still at H Day, man. Double header. Um, and today we get to sit down with Luke Wilson of Four Piston. Luke, thank you, man. Yeah, no problem. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's, it's an honor, man. It's I, I listen to these, so uh, all, all our guys do. So really, we appreciate it. Yeah. So um, you listen to podcast? Yeah. What do you listen to? Ah, uh, you. No. No, we do. Yeah. <laughs> no real. way. Matt and Josh are really into them, and uh, we li- we listen to serial killer uh, podcasts. Also. No way. So on the way out here, we were listening to some uh, stories and unfortunately got cut off where they had some episodes where they had got about halfway through. And then uh, cut off, and you had to wait till next week. Oh, uh, that, that was a bummer. But really, yeah, they listened to quite a few of them. Like, That's awesome. You can't, you know, in the clean room, they're building engines and stuff. You can't just listen to the radio every day. Yeah, uh, they play the same stuff over and over, and you got to get in a groove, and you got to get your. You're doing a lot of math, and you're doing a lot of routine, also. Yeah, but we have steps that we have to take. We're very. Um, particular about making sure that everything's done in a very specific way and honestly listening to podcasts is something that they found that kind of works for them it's calming sometimes it's music depends on the mood sometimes they get into the get into the podcast but yeah they're definitely more uh they listen to them more than i do for sure really yeah yeah i've i've got into podcasts really heavy in the last couple years just um for the fact that I, I've come into the realization that kind of what, what you, you put in your body is what what comes out, you know, and, and um, I, I listen to a lot of rap, hip hop, you know, trash music like that. And I know what it is and I and I, I enjoy it. But that's like listening to um, serial killer podcasts <laughs> every day. Dude. You know, you're, you're going to start <laughs> thinking like that and you really don't get anything out of it besides you know the 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 excitement of the song or singing along or whatever but you listen to a podcast you get a totally different point of view about a subject that you never even thought of in that way oh absolutely yeah and 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 i love that and ever since i've been listening to podcasts i've just thought like man that would be something cool to get into and shoot 72 episodes later it's pretty, man it's pretty cool it's like watching uh it's like being able to watch you know if you get into crime shows and stuff like csi and all that it's like that but you can do it while you're at work and you can listen to it and yeah you do your thing and it's reality so those are real stories and it's kind of interesting i don't know why they got into it but that's that's a crazy one but i think you listen to one and you're like man that person was wild i gotta hear the next one yeah I hear why that why the next person like what in the world motivates how they even got to that point in life yeah it's anyway, nuts man i don't know why those guys listen to those but <laughs> it's highly entertaining <laughs> so <laughs> we, we, we already jumped in pretty deep <laughs> but let's get back to the surface um for the, for those that are listening um the the podcast is not not about cars but i'm using the platform that i have and those are all the people that I know. So, so it's it's a lot of my guests fall into that category, you know. But mo- most of the stuff that I like to discuss on the podcast is is not the what, it's more of the how and the why. Right. So, for people that are listening that aren't in um, on Earth, can you tell them a little about Four Piston? Yeah, um, I feel like you know. It's interesting to hear other people's perspectives of Four Piston. Um, we we do engines. That's what we do. We you know we really have a passion for engine development and cylinder head development. That's what that's what really got us into it. Was we really got into that just artistic side of wanting to develop cylinder heads. And and with that, we tried we tried staying away from building full engines for a long time. And and what we found is that it just goes hand in hand. You have to do it. You have to do. You can't do one without the other. Um, or at least it's hard to. Yeah. And the customers demand that you do both. Um, so that dictated us getting more focused on full engine packages and the whole deal. Um, the racing side was really what motivated that like we won a race when we were kids we grew up in an area where like indianapolis is all about racing you can go to a track any night of the week 
it's a dirt track. There's a lot of circle really? track racing. There's a lot That's of awesome. tons of like USAC midget sprint cars. Um, there's drag race stuff. All the drag race teams are right down the street from us. You got John Forrest, uh, Bergenholz, Pedregon, like all the teams are there. Schumacher. Um, we've got Nitro Alley is what it's called. It's where all the businesses are. And then we've got all a bunch of the IndyCar stuff too. And, and I grew up in, um, you know, some of my classmates were uh, family members for guys that, you know, AJ Watson who built a lot of winning IndyCar chassis and stuff. And these guys built these things in their garages. And so growing up around the racing, like when I was sitting in the classroom, uh, I grew up in Speedway right, right by the track. And we didn't have air conditioning. They had the windows open, you know, it's 95 degrees out. You come into May, and you hear all month the indie cars driving around the track. Well, and this is in Indianapolis. Yeah, you're trying to do schoolwork. <laughs> oh, and all you hear shit. is indie cars every day all month. <laughs> no so way. So it's like a it's a major cultural deal like everybody goes to that race. There's 400,000 people show up to that. A lot of them are local. Uh -huh. A lot of them are from worldwide, but a lot of them are local. Like it's a it's an institution, man. It's crazy. Um, so we we were we had this love for cars and racing and stuff, but uh Josh and I were very um, separated. We, were, we came from different crowds. Um, we ended up, you know, brought together by cars, and, and we just kind of stuck together. We, you know, we had a group of friends that were into this stuff, and um, we wanted to do it forever. You and know, Josh is your partner. Yeah, and okay. he's 50 percent. So Sweet. everything we do is 50 50. Period. It's just it's written in blood yeah so uh that's what we do that's awesome and uh we don't really argue that much really we got a couple little tiffs but we pretty well see eye to eye you guys um, have the common goal in mind common goal you got to keep all your people moving in the same direction towards a common goal that's how you you know build a successful team so um you know a lot of people look at four piss and i hear it all the time oh you guys are a huge company you guys are a big company we had a guy calling last week i just thought you guys were like best buy you know, wow. I, thought you guys were, I thought you guys were a big company. You could just, you know, do this, do that. We're not. We built this from the ground up, like in the garage. Um, and it's grown pretty rapidly. It wasn't that long ago. We were real small. We were nothing. Um, so we've experienced this rapid growth, and it's a learning process for sure. Um, you know, we wanted to race, and we couldn't afford to race we wanted to race really bad so we knew we had to figure out a way to come up with a way to pay for that and, and we looked up to some of the guys even that are still in our industry and the guys that have come and gone and moved on to with their families and doing other stuff and other careers we used to travel around and go to races and stuff and I, I like to go back to that whenever I'm here and we're sitting here in this truck and this pit and all these cars out here and I see the people walking by kids walking by the guy with this, the guy with his kids walking by that used to be us yeah. i wanted so bad to do what we're able to do right now and that's what i try to tell all our guys in the pits if they're having a bad day if their car's not running like they think it should if whatever just remember when you were the person standing over there looking in here dreaming about doing this like what we're doing and what we're living right now is the dream of a lot of people that are over there or maybe that's not. But we're here to put on a show. And we need to act professionally and, and show them the courtesy that that we wish we had when, you know. Or, or that those people that motivated us to get to this point, to stick with it. Somebody motivated us to want to do that. Enough that we stuck with it for our whole lives. And so um, we want to be that for everybody that's looking in from the outside. So what was the thing that made you take on that responsibility and feel like there was an importance in it um you know i'm not real sure just uh i think it's maybe a cultural thing like i don't know there's something inside you that makes you um it's, it's you've always something. felt yeah like just, that just always kind of felt that way um but and i, I always have positive thoughts about what I the direction I want this thing to go and the direction I want the sport to go um, like this drag race thing it's probably about 25% of our business if that mm. our business is growing in other areas but we love the drag race thing we love this we love H day we love this whole and, and you know not just that other events too um, we want to see it grow 
it's a sport that is attainable like the average guy can can come do this um on a week to week basis so we love drag racing we love the development side we love the there's a little bit of ego here too so like like us drag racers are wired a little different not just drag racers all racers are wired a little different there's egos there's drama in these in these pits right now there's drama in this industry right now um we all have a little bit of an ego issue or otherwise we wouldn't be doing this so so you think it's necessary to have that competitive if you competitiveness want, yeah if you want to win you gotta want them you gotta want it bad enough that you're gonna push harder and push harder and push harder than the next guy so it is a little bit of a requirement but at the same time we're also trying to be a leader and grow the people around us that's where our strength is going to come is not from how good we are not you know it's how good do we make the people that are with us and uh, i think that's something we've done really well and that we're going to try to do better at yeah um but our you know that's been a, a strong point in our business and you know josh has a lot of the he has a lot of good ideas man he um he kind of always sets the tone for what our direction is going to be as far as like uh we always we, we kind of made a pact when we started this whatever our customers like we will give them the best of what we have we're not going to hold back on them and that that's stuff that happens like and it's not it's all it's almost smart sometimes to hold back a little bit right save something for for a rainy day yeah right definitely but we always had the idea that whatever we have however strong we can be that's how strong our customers are going to be you know we will give them that so that they have the best and and what that does is it, it retains them so it's one thing to get customers but retaining them as you know their loyalty if you prove to them that you're giving them everything you can then they'll, they'll be loyal they'll stick around yeah so you know for piston I, I feel like sometimes people people think it's a big uh, a big company a big deal we're, we're definitely growing i mean we're expanding our we're doubling our facility right now we're gonna oh, hire some nice. people um you know we're growing i want to be ilmore engineering i want to i want to be the, you know roger penske's engine company that's what i want i want to be that i want to be cosworth i want to be mclaren um it's a long shot man but we got big dreams you know from where we started as nothing putting engine two engines a year together in the garage to now building a couple hundred engines a year you know and selling hundreds and hundreds of cylinder heads and, and everything else um i couldn't even imagine i look we look back at it and we're like i can't believe it's where it's at yeah you know but we're keep we haven't let up yeah sometimes you you get to those points in business where you're you're focusing on oh i gotta get these heads done i gotta get this engine done hj's coming and then you're at the track and i just seen both the cars going down it was monday and i, I forget the, yeah, the brandon's, car. brandon's car they're going down and you guys are right there and just like having that having that experience has to be something crazy and i think like even for myself i, I overlook it a lot of the times and i and i i really want to try to make more of a conscious effort to just sit back sometimes and realize the position that i'm actually at and what you say about you know the guy in the stands i was the kid you know reading the magazines and seeing these guys on forums and now we're going on vacations to japan together going right. to shows and it's just sometimes it just uh, i i need to take a, a second to step back and just realize how far that we have come and realize that it's not about the destination i know for you it's not about the destination of being you know the, the mclaren it's about to get to that point Absolutely. and everything that comes along with it and for you to realize um to realize that and to realize what you're bringing to you're putting on the show and then the kids in the crowd like that that that's a step ahead than most people most people are really just considered about you know, i just got to do this i got to get this taken care of pay the bills and keep it moving you know and keep feeding the machine yeah but sometimes it, it, it just takes that time just to step back and that's that's motivating man it, it definitely is and for you for you to have those big dreams and aspirations it's like now you know how to make it happen you it just takes the work 
yeah. of expanding and getting more employees. And I'm excited to see where it goes, man. We'll see. Ever since I've been coming to H Day, I, I've seen the name around. And you're right. It, it's been the last few years that it turned around from, from being a company that's in the race community to being one of the biggest companies. I mean, from the outside looking in. Right. One of the biggest companies in the race community who's active in it and not just selling parts and not just sponsoring people you guys are in it yeah and we put a lot of our um you know we put a lot back into the sport because of our love for the sport i think like sometimes we're putting enough back into it to where it's not a good business decision probably it's emotional yeah um but it works out we're not completely reckless with it but (laughs) um you know we definitely probably do a little more than we should but it feels good we're having fun and um i mean we when we started we were dirt floor poor man you know um let's dig into that if we can when did you guys start i think that's debatable um <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a question that comes up in interviews quite a bit um you know we we actually uh were from different crowds I hung out with these guys, he hung out with these guys, and we ended up in a, in a car together driving to Atlanta to go to the Nopi Nationals in the late 90s. Wow. Um, and we, you know, he was working on cars, and I was into stuff, you know, I was into stuff like that too. Um, but we didn't hang out, you know. Um, so I, I played sports, he was more into like skating and stuff like that, and we just were different crowds. Like we, skateboarding? Yeah, we were in a small nice. town. We were in a small town. So okay. we, we kind of grew up in a farm town. Um, and, uh, we ended up in this car together driving down and we had to, we were forced to talk to each other. It was, <laughs> it was this crazy thing. You didn't have phones and stuff. Like you couldn't sit there on your phone. <laughs> yeah. right? We had to talk to each other the whole drive. It was crazy. Um, we became good friends and we wanted to do the things that we were seeing in the magazines. We wanted to do that. And, uh, we ended up wanting to put a race car together and we'd go to the races we started going around to races and stuff even before we could drive and stuff you know so uh it was it was it was interesting or before he he was driving really so um at what he, he what was, age was, were he you was guys? swapping a car we were 16 okay he was probably 15 right at that time it was, okay it was around that time um in, in his first car like the first thing they did was swap the honda put a you know put a motor in it and that was his first gig, like yeah. right out the gate. <laughs> Before he had his license, that was he was already doing that. Wow. So, um, and people do that now, but back then, you know, this is in the late nineties. It was it was bigger on the West Coast. Like we were, this wasn't on it was on the East Coast. It wasn't where we were. Yeah. So it, it was real strange to do this where we were from. And uh, you know, we got into it. our whole group of friends, uh, kinda did the same thing. And anyway, we started going to races. We wanted to build a race car. And Josh and I kind of stuck with it. Everybody else moved on, did their own thing. Um, but we hustled as much as we could, doing odd jobs, painting houses, racing on the street. Like we raced, he wouldn't race. He'd build a car, I'd race it. I don't know, I was a little reckless, so yeah. I'd do that. We'd do it for small money, and we were saving up everything, we working extra hours, doing odd jobs, trying to build a race car, and that's what we did. So even at that early age, you guys had the same goal in mind. Yeah, yeah, and wow. we didn't we didn't know it was going to be a business when we decided that was when uh, we, we actually um, we were buying engine parts for this engine. We wanted to you know we we wanted to do everything ourselves, but but we had to, we thought this cylinder head porting was like black magic, right? And it is a little bit. Mm-hmm. It's an art. It's an art for sure. It, there's math. There's different ways of doing it. There's different theories. There's everybody's got a different way, and their way's right, and the other guy's wrong, kind of thing. Um, and we, we bought a head, and it was very expensive. It was the most expensive piece of the, piece of the whole car, to be honest. Like, the most expensive piece of the car at that time was a cylinder head. And it sucked. It was terrible. Uh, we found that out later. Um, and that's when we decided we wanted to control our own program. Yeah. And so, and we, we grew up around racing and engine shops and stuff like that. So, um, Josh was working in an engine shop, started working on, he was working day and night on different port designs, head designs, stuff like that. So... Um, it wasn't until later, years later, where I, I decided we can't make any money porting heads by hand. We're wearing ourselves out. Like, the hours we put into it versus what you get paid doesn't add up. No one can make a living doing it like that. Um, and, like, and doing a good job at it. You mm-hmm. can, like, fluff and buff, do whatever you do. 
you can do it by hand but to really get paid for your time you're not going to be doing real race sets so i wanted to do the cnc deal and actually the engine shop we were both working at i was doing marketing stuff for him josh was building you know building engines and doing heads uh matt monday even worked there my other built engine builder justin actually worked there like wow they all, we all but we all knew each other outside of this so we everybody kind of ended up there um we we really uh i wanted to do the cnc thing and so i got hooked up with the company that invented cnc headboard and i went over there and i said what do we need to do like what kind of obligation is this what kind of money was it going to take and i sat down and i met with them and i didn't have the money and so i went back to the engine shop that that everybody was working in and we we're like what do, you know we go in with me 50 50 we'll take the port designs you know we'll i want to do this high you know more volume that you guys are killing yourselves sitting here for 100 hours working on a head you're not getting paid for the time this is what we need to do to make money so the product that you were making at that point was was it a successful product yeah, uh they were good heads good and better than what you had going not, on not marketed um oh yeah i mean really really good stuff. okay good heads we had a good mentor um the guy's name was jim stewart uh taught us how to build engines the right way um he passed away about a year and a half ago i think um didn't take care of his health mm. uh bad at business um really really good engine builder knowledgeable taught us the right way like it's hard we, to get everything right <laughs> yeah it is yeah. We, we wouldn't be uh a lot of times people are really good at the mechanical side of thing aren't really good at the book side of thing or they don't want to be yeah so um in small business is tough engine business is tough um a lot of times you're not getting paid for your time if you charge for your time that you put into this engine a lot of people don't want to buy it <laughs> it's expensive yeah, yeah. you put a lot of time you can put you can put twice as much time as you need to you can put the right amount of time like you can you can spend a lot of time doing engines um there's always something you can spend time on to make better so it's hard to get paid for the time that you put in and it's a balance and so a lot of guys don't charge for the time they go out of business they charge too much for their time and they don't go to do a good job and they go out of business they charge for their time and then they can't get anybody to buy the product because they can't market it because they're always working on the engines, right? So they have to have all of this. Yeah. Um, but there are very successful engine companies in this world. Yeah. You got to look at what they've done and try to try to duplicate that or try to come up with your own method. So you've seen that you had an opportunity that nobody's going to pay for this or we're, we're working ourselves to the bone and we got to figure out a way to make this done yeah. easier and better. Right. So he, he basically told me 80-20. Uh, He's like, you pay for 80%. I'll pay for 20%. You get 20%. I get 80%. Mm. I was like, no. <laughs> we ain't doing that. <laughs> it's just split down the middle. We're going to do it like this. Josh and I get this. You get this. We developed all the ports. So, um, I, and I was bringing some of the money to the table too. So, you know, it didn't work out. Long story short. He didn't do it you know he continued to struggle and do his one engine at a time kind of thing working until he couldn't work anymore and it, but he gets us all he got to see us do you know see us do what we did he yeah. got to see us become pretty successful in what we're doing he couldn't believe how many like he he came over to the shop one time probably right before he passed and he couldn't believe it really? he was blown away Wow. He was like, you guys have more cylinder heads in here right now than we would do in the last 10 years. And that was your mentor? Yeah. That must have felt good. It did. Yeah. Yeah, I was saddened by it a little bit, to be honest. Um, really? Yeah. I saw him. Um, I always really, really respected him and liked him. And when I saw him look at what we did, I was, I almost, man, I, you know, I, it brought me down a little bit. I actually felt I actually, I felt a little bit of guilt. I felt a little angst. I felt weird. And why was that? I don't know. I just you know, I wanted him to be I wanted him to be successful. Um and when he when I when I was showing him that, I felt weird. Here we got this new building. We got I mean, we we bought solar heat and this and that like it's kind of silly like some of the stuff we did. And he's looking at it, and he was just, he was proud, I could tell. But at the same time, I, I thought, maybe, what if he was in on that? Yeah. What would have been different for him and his family? 
Um, but the dude had a good life. He had a good, he had, you know, he had some of the ultimate things you could have as an engine builder. He's been kicked out of series because his engines were too good. That's wow. like the ultimate, right? Yeah, so, definitely. <laughs> at the time, it feels like crap because you're like, well, how am I going to eat? But he's had good stuff like that. So, But I did. I felt a little weird like that. And, you know, anyway, we moved on. And we move on. And that's that. And you, uh, so so then what did you guys do after after uh, he passed on the deal? I, uh, I borrowed $3,000 from my grandfather and uh, did the minimum that I could to get that cylinder head thing going. And they thought it was, a, you know, they thought, well, here, pay us cash. We'll do a couple. We'll see where it goes. After, uh, after about eight months, they're like, dude, we got to do something different here. You're doing way more. <laughs> and we had a unique way of marketing, I think, um, bringing it to the table. And the, the quality was excellent. Um, Josh ended up working there and did the machining and the company's called weld tech um the owner's since passed away also and so um it's been passed on obviously that business is now a, a big part of our business too so um and and we still machine on all those machines to this day so wow. um that's uh when it, they thought we might have done like five heads or something like that, and you know when we were when we when they punched that five hundred on one, it was like, all right, this is legit. Wow, we, we became their biggest customer. And so they, they invented it in the late eighties, and this is something that changed the motorsports industry forever. Um, their CNC head pointing that they invented changed this forever. It was actually started in in, uh, in the Weld Wheels factory in Kansas City. Mm -hmm. Kenny Weld was part of the Weld family. It was his, you know, his relatives that were part of that. So, um, there's a very interesting story that's way too long for this. But <laughs> that whole business, if you if you um, do some research on Kenny Weld, uh -huh. anybody listening, there's a lot of drug activity. Uh, there's a lot of legal stuff. There's a lot of. Uh, it's really an awesome story, man. Really? Yeah. yeah he he was he was a drug dealer. So no for, all, for, all, for all the race car drivers, for NASCAR and all that stuff. And, and he, he needed to do a legit business to cover some of this stuff. And that's what the cylinder head pointing thing was. And he invented this stuff. He took he tore these CNC machines apart and, out, apart and retrofitted them for, for doing this. And it changed the racing industry forever. Cylinder heads were the biggest problem in racing. And NASCAR and all this stuff, like duplicating the work and getting it in a timely manner. He changed it. Heads were showing up on pallets from all these race teams nobody had cnc machines he he did all of them everybody that does it he did it he taught them how to do it they copied his process that's how it all worked out period an employee sold his process to other people like under the table wow and that's how it got out there he was highly secretive nobody see nobody got to see those machines nobody was allowed back there we still do that nobody's allowed to see that stuff period we just carried on because that was his. We're carrying on his deal. Nobody saw that yeah. crap. Nobody sees it now. Oh shit! So it was cool. We try to carry that on. Um, and uh, but you gotta research that story. That's the whole that's Kenny, awesome. The yeah, Kenny Wells story will. should be a freaking movie, like a real <laughs> legit movie. No it's way! Badass. I want to look that up. Yeah. Uh, so so we did that and it took off and um, obviously it changed our lives forever. When, when was this? When when you started doing the I mean, heads? This must have been ten years ago. Okay. Yeah, not that long ago. If you really think about it, but you know, ten years ago and uh, you know a lot of our customers here. Um, I remember our, I remember some of our first heads and who they were sold to. Some of these guys are that loyal that they stuck around. Yeah. Through, through all that, so. Um, but you know it's evolved obviously from cylinder heads to engines and we had a love for engines we were always building our own engines but selling engines was a whole different ball game all together like to really sell motorsports great engines anybody can put an engine together man in their garage you open a manual you throw the stuff together you can half ass measure stuff and do that stuff to to do motorsports great engines that are gonna like really be a high quality product it's a whole different ball game and there's a, there's a huge learning curve behind it, but it takes some, uh, 
we have, you know we have literally SOPs we have standard operating procedure for everything we do we've got very uh, this is exactly how we do it and anybody that doesn't want to do it our way is not gonna not gonna be there so it, it's interesting we have some cool processes now you said that you had um, an interesting way of marketing how, how how what did you do to market the your products I think that um, people were, at the time, we were in a transition from forums to social media as we know it today. So what forums were you guys on? Oh, Honda Tech, Club SI. Uh, Club SI was even before Honda. I mean, Honda Tech was always big, but. You were know. you guys on NWP? Nope. No? That was my forum. That's the one that I was really? on. Yeah, yeah, NWP. No, we did, uh, we did a lot of them. Um, but what we did is we started showcasing the engine builds and giving details that people didn't want to give. And we were giving away, you know, we were showing stuff and writing the detail out of how to do this and what we do that people weren't willing to share. And so, honestly, a lot of the engines you see, the engine structure and the architecture of what you see from all the racers goes back to some of the things that we were, that we put out there. And we had good mentors, man. We weren't born with this knowledge, okay? Yeah. Yeah, like you don't wake up and you're born with knowing how, this is what you use. This is what you use. So we were using products that some of the other guys maybe didn't even know about. You know, we were we were putting valve strings in them that they didn't know existed. We were using valves that they you know stuff that they didn't have that they weren't using. And some of the race component feature things that we grew up around in race in you know motorsports in that area, we had easy access to that stuff. But we put it out there, and that same basic architecture is what you're going to see in this all motor class regardless of who's putting this stuff together it's all kind of been you know yeah uh a lot of the stuff looks the same so what what was what was the motivation to to give out the blueprints uh if you you it doesn't matter how good you are at your job if nobody knows about it so you got to throw it out there and show them that you, we, we figured if we show people that we know this much, that we know how to do this, then we're going to pick up customers and followers and people are going to want us to do this. If we don't tell anybody, then nobody's ever going to know. Yeah. And we don't do anything. We have these great secrets. That's all it is. And that's all it becomes is great secrets. Not, you know, if we, if we share some knowledge and, and show people some stuff, then and that, that, that started on the forums. And then social media just made it easy to do the day-to-day. -day. Like, it's much easier and faster to put out information. Now, it's not as detailed. The The forums going away was is tough. Yeah. Because there was dialogue. There was learning process. There was... You don't post on social media and get a dialogue going of a learning... The, you, there's no teaching there. It comes and goes so fast. It's here, and three hours later, there's another post. So there's not dialogue back and forth. There's not pictures of this, pictures of that. Like it's the forums going away. I think is, um, I think they'll come back a little bit. Really? Yeah. No way. I do. I was thinking about that. I, I I think I was actually thinking about starting a forum just for the 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 nostalgia of it and for people just to like escape and go on the forums. But what I would want the forum to have would be its own server so you can upload pictures directly yeah because remember how we used to have to do it back in the day it was a pain tiny was pic terrible. or whatever it was you know upload it on that and then take the link and then put it over it was yeah it was a, it was a pain yeah I mean, people spend a lot of time on those forums there are people sitting at their jobs not doing their job <laughs> all day sitting me, on the me. Forums. Yes. <laughs> shout out to best buy yeah. <laughs> but but there was a lot of information shared at that time now it's kind of there's a lot of misinformation shared and there's a lot of it's just so fast like you something happens and then uh, two days later it's gone yeah because this social media machine is moving so fast but it's also an opportunity for businesses to really share a lot about the, you know if they have a lot going on it can be good for you if you don't you're not going to build a following very quick so but it's really interesting so when you were making the transition from forums to social media did you guys realize the the tool that it was at that time or it took a little while to to catch on to no, the josh was on it right away really yeah he was on it now there were other things we we really did well on facebook um initially we did not we neglected instagram and i think it's been a big role reversal there mm -hmm. like we but there there's there's different ways to do both um but i think you know 
people have called us all kinds of stuff. Oh, you're the marketing machine. Well, your products suck. You're just the marketing machine. Hmm. We've been called that a lot, but you know, there's there is some truth in that we do some decent marketing, um, but we have a lot to talk about. Yeah. So there's a lot. There's something behind it. It's not just marketing. We're doing some pretty cool stuff. So, um, you know, there's always going to be critics, and that's part of business. I used to get real worked up, man. I'd see a, I'd see some words on a on a page, and I'd get real worked up over those. Yeah. And now I'm, maybe a little bit old age is like I sit back and I'm like, there's a reason that that we're being criticized on that, and there's thousands of people tens of thousands quarter million people that stand behind us and, and believe in us so I'm not going to let that one person get under my skin and why do you think it was when you were um, you would let that get you worked up passion for what we're doing and just uh, taking it personal yeah and it's not personal um, it, talking face to face no one ever talks the same as yeah. they do on line or, yeah you know definitely. it's different it, you take a lot of the feeling out of uh everything when you're just sitting there hitting keys on your phone and stuff so you lose touch with the person on the other end yeah so um people say things they don't mean people say things they shouldn't say they go outside their true being i think sometimes sometimes maybe that is who they are but sometimes they go outside of it just to but that's that's part of it and so you got to cope with it, and that's part of social media. That's why kids are having, you know, there's a lot. Of, I can't imagine being a kid in high school growing up. The stuff that happened, yeah, nobody ever knew about it. Two or three people knew about it, and we thought it was the end of the world. Now, now these kids got all this social media stuff. It's crazy. Um, I can I can't imagine something happening at school, and then all of a sudden it's posted for the world to see. Like once World Star gets a hold of it, oh, everybody sees these it. These kids, man. I, I feel for him. So anyway, that's, I think social media is important. It's been important to our business for sure. Um, it's how we've grown and how we continue to grow. Um, but you have to stay creative. You have to stay on the cutting edge and uh, keep moving and figure out how to reach your people and communicate with them. And just remember that every, every one of them is a person just like us and, and you got to treat them as such. So um, that's the biggest thing. When you um, realize the power of social media, what are some of the big things that you did? Well, not even just social media, but as far as realizing the power of marketing, what are some of the, the things that you did or tactics that you could share that that helped grow the brand? Um, we focus on some of the details. Just like in racing, everything is about all the fine details. It's not about one thing that makes you fast, right? It's every tiny detail added up to the big sum right so um social media i feel is the same way target where you know keywords target uh the what time you're posting does the picture have anything that draws attention to it that makes somebody want to hit that like button because the rate at which when you first post that thing the rate at which people click on it like it whatever that's going to determine how many people it gets put in front of right in the first 15 minutes mm -hmm. if it's if people are passing it it ain't going anywhere it's not gonna you know it's not gonna all of a sudden take off it does or it doesn't and so it has to be something that they're willing to read that they're willing to stay on for more than a couple seconds and their algorithms on these things pick all that up and they decide who they're going to put it in front of do you think the algorithm will actually read how long somebody's actually looking at that image before they swipe up? I feel that it does. Really? That's that makes sense. I never thought I, about that. I don't know that. You know, I'm speculating. Well, if you think about it like this point, there's a lot of uh, the big influencers um, outside of anything that we're in. You know, if you want to say like um, motivational speakers or something like that, um, you can see their post and they have really long detailed posts about a certain subject say it'll be that can of soda right, right there right, right. and they'll say this is the first can of soda that blah, 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 whatever whatever it is but it's always made me wonder like you, know, you just wrote pretty much like a page to get this point off and yeah it's a good point and it's good content but i, I always wondered if there was something else there that maybe the longer you're looking at a post yeah i, I think about that too um and we're not sure. I wish I knew. Like, I, I mean, I think that um, 
I do think that sometimes you can be way too wordy, and it's not going to go anywhere. Um, and, and their rules have changed. When when they first first started wanting you to do videos, well, they wanted them to be real short. Now they want them to be a little longer. Like they're trying to compete with you know Facebook's trying to compete with YouTube, so they want different uh, different things than what they used to when they first started going at it. And Instagram wants something different than what Facebook wants. So. Uh, you got to figure that out, and it's still a learning process. We 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 do try to set up patterns and see what is going to work. Like, did this work? I know what pictures work, hundred yeah. percent. I know which ones don't, and sometimes I like to post the ones that don't work because I feel some way about those. Yeah, but I post them up anyway because they're good for other people. Like, it might be a post about this that doesn't matter. It's going to do like crap, and I know what it's going to do like crap, and it's it's a waste of our time you know as far from a business perspective it's a waste of our um that's the, the days that we have and the, the hours that we have to make a move on on marketing but it's something we feel good about so we post it pictures of race cars they don't do squat on our thing just like stickers don't do squat on race cars for people feels good right yeah yeah feels good to see your sticker on a car that's about that's about the end of that doesn't go anywhere past that but same thing with social media. I like posting up pictures of my friends' race cars. They do terrible <laughs> on, on, on <laughs> social media. Yeah. Nobody cares. Everybody cares about their own damn car. And that's a lot of it. Like a lot of the thing you got to realize, like a lot of these people care about their own thing and they don't they don't care about this guy's thing or that guy's thing. But they well you got to give them something that they dream about having and that they you know, oh, I want that. That's cool. That's awesome. And and we've you know, everything's kind of gone boutique. It's not, people are into the more expensive shoes, the more expensive this. Everybody's willing to spend a little extra right now. I feel like that boutique feeling has come around. It's yeah, no, right now. definitely. I even feel 100%. it in, in my way. You know, if you if you can market something to me and just to me in a, in a small demographic, that has more um, allure to me than just something else that you could just go to a store to buy or whatever you know and that's that's the whole way that the the whole hype beast community works there's um even the other day they just dropped the some yeezys right yeah so i bought a pair because i've been wanting them and they were on they were on sale the whole day and i was like it's cool I, i like the design and then the next day a different design comes out and that one you can't even get and that one, that one is the one that's gonna blow up because everybody wants the exclusive one, you know. Right. But for for some stuff, I, I don't mind spending a little extra on if I know that the marketing went into it. it I, I I'm a really really big fan of marketing. Yeah. So say if somebody has a good way to market their product their t-shirt or whatever i'll buy it just to buy it just to support because i'm like okay cool you got me bro they gotta you catch know? your senses man they gotta catch your eyes they gotta have a catchy phrase they gotta make you want it and uh if they do you get your mindset on that and people will people will impulse buy people will save up for something that or they'll re- you know you got all kinds of different buyers you got everybody's different in how they think josh and i we make fun of each other because of how we buy products yeah we both like nice stuff, but we buy products very different. I make fun of them all the time on his shoe stuff. <laughs> I'm not into it, but I yeah. have other stuff that's similar that I'm really into and I'm really picky about. And, you know, it has to be the best or I'm not doing it. So you what know? type of stuff are you into? Stuff that I can't afford. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Aren't we all? <laughs> I like boats. Boats? Yeah. Like really? Yeah. For, um, like, what kind of, like, fishing boats? Or? Uh that too um well add that to the list i just like being on the water man really i'm really really into into being on the water nice i like racing boats fast boats slow boats fishing boats really into boats just anything yeah that's awesome are you into fishing yeah absolutely i've been fishing my whole life what kind of fish uh mostly striped bass but um that's what i target i catch everything else right yeah so no i i fish freshwater lakes uh, that's it and i bass fish walleye fish i fish for everything 
but usually striper fishing and catching everything else. That's really cool. My uh, my cousin that's on the podcast a lot, um, he actually he loves fishing, man. Like I always say when he talks about fishing, like his eyes light up. Like he saw windy peppercorn or something, man. It's the one place I go. I go to the lake, man, and I can't. I'm like out of uh, away from my business world and life, and yeah, I just, just look at the water and I'm looking at my fishing line. Just go out there, relax, man. My phone doesn't work out there. It's fantastic. Yeah, and I told him, I said, man, you have, you have so much passion that you should see if you can maybe do something with it. And we went to lunch one day, and he came up with a name, and we went to my house and made a logo, and now he has his own fishing brand. Is that Bad Fish Cartel? That's awesome. Yeah, so he started making T-shirts and hats, and um, he's kind of getting the. He he comes and hangs out with me at the shop. I'll show him a little things about social media and this and he he's on he's like man i'm posting this i got them this many people to like it i gotta go get content i gotta and i'm like that's awesome man yeah. well, we got a lot of customers that actually come come down from minnesota uh and they all they're all big fishermen nice so they, they race in our class but uh we talk about fishing about as much as we can <laughs> that's cool there's always those 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 sort of hobbies that like everybody has you know whether it's fishing or whether it's skateboarding or w whatever it is it's like we all kind of had those things that that go along with our passion right. of cars but um so do you have somebody that's full-time working your social media uh no um josh and i do it together but we're all a part of it like everybody in the shop when they're doing a job they know that if they're doing something that we think people are interested in, set up, take a few minutes, get a picture, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, try to, and everybody's got a little bit of an artistic edge, so, um, and take pride in the pictures, and everybody kind of, we got a little thing going on where if your picture gets posted, you know, it's kind of cool. So, uh, Ryan takes them, um, but we all take them, so, and I there's times when we get really busy it's hard to we do some really cool stuff and you get in a hurry you can't do it but uh and we want to do more videos like that's that's we really want to but it's that's hard to set up for yeah. when you're when you're trying to get your job done and we're time based anyway so we know we have this much time to do this project and if we don't do it in that amount of time we're not getting paid the shop rate the shop has to make this much and if we're slow then the shop is losing so um we have time everything's a time process and when we go over that we got to try to pick it up somewhere else so it does take time to take the good pictures for social media and things like that but um it is something that we all do so everybody in the shop is dedicated to that i usually do most of the social media but josh does some as well matt does some so <coughs> excuse me um we used to all do it quite a bit but we're much more methodical in what we're going to post right now like we used to just kind of throw up whatever we were doing. Yeah. Now it's very, there's a reason for everything. Do you have a time time limit every few hours or every it, day? It, or It depends on how busy we are. We're supposed to, but we, we, we miss it a lot because sometimes you just can't. Yeah. Sometimes the, right now, our biggest problem is phones. Um, we get an insane amount of phone calls. And some of them are business, and some of them are tech help. And we want to be as accommodating to everybody as we can. Like, we want to be friends with all these guys. But sometimes you can't help everybody that's calling it. But so that's that's the thing we're sorting out right now. And I think that's what our new building is going to help with. We're going to have people, dedicated people, to do customer service, answering phones. You know, I don't need to be the guy on the phone uh, giving people tracking numbers. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. So... Um, and, and Josh doesn't need to be that guy. He's picking up the phone a lot. Like, he's trying to pick up the slack right now. So we are working on that aspect. Um, but, it, you know, as you know, automotive is low-margin stuff. So it's not like we're, we're not making electronics here where you have a 900% markup on stuff. We're, we're doing automotive. It's, it's always been the race to zero margin. Yeah. We have a margin that we have to make. And so... Um, you have to be conscious about the, empl the employees you're hiring. You got to make sure that they're going to produce and, and make up. You got to sell quite a bit to make up for someone's salary and retirement and workman's comp and health insurance. And, you know, we're not just 
a lot of the automotive stuff, you just kind of got a guy coming in, you're paying him. That's not how, you know, we have full full benefits and the whole, the whole deal for everybody. So, um, you got to make sure that they're going to put as much into the business as what, as what you got to pay them. So, it's a big deal to grow. Now, how do you find th- these people? How, what is your screening process to find a good employee they were terrible at it um (laughs) no me too (laughs) we've been we've been lucky uh we've known matt for (laughs) we've known matt for forever okay so um we all grew up together we know what kind of person he is he's a hard-working dude and he knows how to build engines because he grew up in the same engine shops so he was a natural hire for us yeah when we decided it's time to take on another salary and benefits and all this stuff matt was was there he's very valuable to our to our process and then we had to do it again well we hired another guy that is a good friend of ours actually that that we grew up with he used to own an import shop back in the in the heyday you know in the late 90s he did really well and he's very particular so we have to hire people that are very particular and i think it's the hiring process is going to get harder and harder the more we run out of friends (laughs) yeah to hire um, we didn't know Ryan, but he fit right in. He works hard. That's all we care about. Show up to work, work hard, and care about your job. And uh, we'll move move you right out if you don't fit. And that's that's a tough part of business, too. I struggle with that. With You've that. had to do that? Yeah, for sure. Um, if they're not on, you know, either get on, get on the bus or get off the bus, you know what I mean? Uh, if you're not with it, you got to move on. Yeah, and you can train people, teach people. You can, but if they're not on the bus, you got to get on with them. I fired people in the first week. So, what does a conversation like that it's go sucks. like? Firing somebody is one of the worst things ever. I, I had to do it. Man, I worked a job. Uh, I worked at a drywall place um, as a kid when I was in college, and uh, I, I drove a drywall truck. I, I carried drywall, delivered it, put it in houses, all that, all that fun stuff, mm-hmm. and. Um, I ended up in a management position there, and I remember one time I had to fire a guy a week before Christmas. No way. And it was my superiors. That basically, I got that job. It was the worst thing I ever did in my life. It was terrible. Wow. It was the worst feeling. I couldn't sleep for days. And you don't fire somebody a week before Christmas. It's wrong. You know what I mean? Yeah. The guy had kids, like the whole deal. He wasn't doing his damn job. But you can do better than that. You know, so that was a tough deal. It was a good learning experience. It was terrible. Um, you got to get th- tough skin when you're dealing with hi- hiring's terrible, firing's terrible. Um, but hiring can be a great thing. But it, it's tough. You get you get the wrong guy, you got to get him out of there. You got to get on with it because you're you're responsible for all your employees that you have and their families. And it's your you got to make sure you're successful because you're taking care of them. You're responsible for their their well being too. So you can't have somebody dragging the bus down. But yeah, I think that's one one struggle that I've dealt with and I'm still trying to deal with is finding good employees. And um, like I, I tried at the beginning to, to hire friends. And even I always say my little sister, I fired her four times. Yeah. <laughs> and it can be uh, tough. I, some of the best employees I've had, and, and I'm pulling from both my businesses. Some of the best employees I've had are... are people that i've known you know the better the devil you know so but also when they don't work out that's when it hurts and that's that's the road that i kind of went down and um it it didn't end up good you know at the end of the day right now um there's only a couple of them that i even speak to that that worked with me part-time or whatever but um the guy that i have working with me right now alex it's crazy, man. It, it it's it, it gets me to think more that it's not about age; it's about maturity. Because Alex is nineteen years old, and when he started working with us, he was working at In and Out. He was going to high school, and he was um, then he was working with us. And this dude, his work ethic was insane. You know, he yeah. he was on it. He he took care of stuff. He didn't make any dumb excuses like you would expect from a 19 year old kid. And um, I had two guys in there last year, and he's doing a better job than both of them combined. And he's 19 years old kid. Yeah. And if it's you got just, the work ethic, you got it. Yeah, and, and it's 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 a blessing to find somebody like him. But it's 
for me it's been few and far between it's hard and what we have to do it's not much you know it's not building it's not doing math or anything like that it's i think it's a fun job you know but it, it leans on that side of it that's uh, fun you know we're at lunch oh, let's take a little longer or something like that or th- right. that i need people to be as focused as i am when it, when it comes to an, an urgency of an order so when you look and the order is there still and it should have been shipped out yesterday hey why didn't this get done oh because we don't have any more of that well did you check here Oh, okay. It's like, no, dude, I need somebody who's going to be as passionate about me, uh, about the order getting out as I am. Yeah, they got to take ownership of their job. Yeah, which is hard. And that's hard, not even as an employee, just to find that in somebody to just take ownership of whatever that they do. Right. Yeah, we've we've been interviewing for some of our next positions. So what are some of the questions that you guys ask? Oh, all the bad ones, man. (laughs) I think hiring is one of the toughest things to do. Yeah, uh, it really is. So uh, our interview process could probably be a, uh, it could be a comedy show. <laughs> really? No, it's good. Jo- Josh is much better at it than I am. I'm terrible. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I've made some funny hires, man. I've made some bad ones. <laughs> but sometimes you get a vibe about somebody and you think they're great, and then if they can't show up to work on time. <laughs> yeah, you know we're all, but we're just lucky right now. We got guys that are bust and knuckles that's and good don't man. make excuses and i like when somebody makes a mistake i did that let me take care of that mm-hmm. i did that i'm sorry let's move on i don't want to hear oh well, i did that because this guy did this and this guy did that you know i don't want to hear excuses i want to hear we all make mistakes yeah i make them every 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 day everybody does we got a lot going on the busier you get something can happen own up to it kick his butt get on with it on to the next and so I like when people do that, take ownership of it. And, um, you know, I, I just think the hiring process is so, it's my worst thing to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> no, it, it's definitely a challenge. And it's all of this stuff that you're talking about. It's those, these are the challenges of business that people really don't even consider. They just see this, the sticker everywhere and they see the name everywhere. And they just think, like you said, oh, I thought you were just a big, big company, you yeah. know, but yeah it is but there's a lot more that goes into it than just going fast right and it's down to the to the nitty-gritty of hiring somebody or getting supplies or social media or whatever yeah and you got to decide in this industry like there there's there's a couple ways to build businesses there's horizontal integration there's vertical integration and you got to decide what you're going to sub out and what you're going to do yourself and my dad always told me uh you know from a very young age he said you need to pick what what you're what you want to do pick what you're good at and be the best at it don't do this and do this and do that and do that like pick this thing that you're good at and just kill it do the best at it and then you can expand on that um and i think a lot of people try to do too much i see automotive shops doing it all the time man they're working on cars oh they also tune oh they also now build engines oh they also do this now and wraps (laughs) They do. Yeah, they do everything. Systems to get it all. they can't ever make it out of where they're at because they're just not focused on what they need to do to make money. And once you start making that money and making a good profit margin, the rest falls into place. It becomes easier. The, you know, the, more, the more freedom you have with, with some finances, the more you can make on other things. And the, 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 you know, the faster you can grow your business. So... Um, we really stuck to that, like do what you do and do it better than anybody else and then expand on it. So there were things that we sub out. We sub out block sleeving right now. Ramy does it. Can we do block sleeving? We have the machines. We can do it. 100%. We're very focused on what we're doing and he does a really good job for us. So we sub that out. And that's that. People don't like it. Have at it. Yeah. We get them in. They're to our spec. He does his job very well. And then we build our engines. We do finished machine work at our place, but he does a lot of a lot of the stuff for us. So you got to decide when you're going to horizontally, you know, when you're going to do that and sub stuff out, and when you're going to bring stuff in house. Bringing stuff in house may sound awesome, but there's a lot to it. It's more people, it's more machines, it's more time, it's more customer service, it's more dealing with blocks, which are twice as heavy, and we don't like picking them up. <laughs> you know, so um, there's a lot there's a lot to that. So you just got to figure out what you're going to sub out, what you're going to do yourself, what What's your next machines you're going to buy? And um, what are you going to stay out of? 
So I know some companies that, that do really, really well, used to machine all their own stuff, and now they now they don't at all, and they're just more profitable. That's the only difference. And then when if business ever slows down, they don't carry that overhead. Somebody else carries that overhead. Yeah. So there's there's a point where you got to decide what, what you're going to do. So Now you uh, now you mentioned Rami. That was pretty much the first time that I seen the business, the logo, and realized that it was, it was something big yeah. in the community. How did that relationship come to oh i'm gonna have to dig deep because i don't even remember um really uh i didn't really see him as a top racer he was kind of middle of the pack if you look back to when he he built a car and he was kind of around he was a younger guy and then he he came out with a sport front car after he had wrecked his somehow somebody wrecked his. Mm -hmm. i don't know the real story behind that but um he came out with this sport front car he was running probably mid-pack backpack Seemed like a good setup, good team. And at the time, we couldn't give away a B-Series head. Like, we couldn't give a head away in turbo cars. We just, I don't know why, we just weren't in it. We could sell K-Series on motorheads, and that was that. Mm -hmm. Couldn't give a turbo head away to anybody in sport front. And Ramey ended up getting, he had uh, one of our um, competitors' heads, and I had sold a head to Sheepy. And that head ended up in Ramey's hands somehow at a race, and they put it on the car, and the car instantly became a top, a front running car. Like, wow. That's all they switched. The car picked up a bunch of power. They went fast. We got excited. We used to get really, really excited over very small achievements like that. And it was a huge achievement for us, though. And that got us going, and then the Speed Factory thing got us going, and we, we now, we became the Sport Front Wheel Drive cylinder head. Um, and, and then we still are um, right now. I mean, you saw today he went 196.7 miles an hour. It's caused all kinds of drama online. Uh, I know we're probably we're missing it all right now. It's 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 some heat right now. Guys. I didn't. What, what is the right what's now. the drama about? So I this mean, is going to come out Thursday. So the, the drama's probably going to be gone by then. But <laughs> it, it probably will be. But I mean, there's some heat right now. Like this, these cars are going in, in the 170s this weekend, and he went 196. Oh shit! He obliterated any speed record there is by a lot and you know the last race was even questionable um whether you know people are questioning because he went that seven seven nine at one one you know 190 and then today rolls out a 196 it's way faster than anybody what was the quarter mile time uh it went uh 823 you know the track's not all there it's spun, yeah. spun in third and so everybody's saying the car has nitrous on it that's what's going on online right now. So they tore the car down today. No way. Tech went over there, tore that tore into it. But all the body, all the belly pans off, the trans tunnel, everything's out. Like all that stuff is a part was a part on that car. And they teched it very heavily. It was protested. And that's protesting is important to the sport. Anybody should be allowed to do that. It's not offensive. It validates what you just accomplished mm -hmm. when they don't find anything. So it, I think it's important. I'm glad it happened. Obviously, they found nothing on the car because um, he came back up and ran next round so and went back number one qualifier again. And, like, it's tight. Number one is a 823 right now. Number two is a 824. It's mm -hmm. not like we're blowing, like, they're blowing the competition away right now. But the mile an hour was tough. That's what was the mile an hour on the second run? That's big. 190, 190, 191, something like that. It's it's up there. But that that's – and nothing was changed on the tune-up, straight up. Nothing was changed. Just – so I, it spun the tire on the previous pass, and I think that's why you saw the mile an hour up. Like it spun in third gear. So, so. without uh, without getting into what's going on with the car or anything, does it does it make sense to you that that's the correct speed that it should have been going? Or it makes a lot of power. The car makes a lot of power. Um, it's a good engine program. It's a good car. Like you go look at that car. You go look at some of the other cars. You'll, I mean, that car is a nice car. Yeah, it's it's a race car. So it makes sense to you. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Honestly, I, I think that we've been real soft on that car. Actually, we got on Sean. We had some discussions, and I'll, I'll get back to how we met and stuff. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. That was your original question. Yeah. But we had some discussions about the class maybe la early last year about the direction of the class and how it doesn't help if one car is just, like, going way faster than everybody. we got to keep it competitive. And I think that he let everybody – everybody really caught up a lot, and the rules changed, and – Cars started running nitrous, and some cars didn't. But most of the cars are a lot of the cars are on nitrous. 
Is that against they, the rules? They, no, it's it's in the rules. Okay. And last year they were. So I, there's a big horsepower gap. There's some cars that make ten, you know, a thousand fifty, and there's some cars that make over fourteen hundred. That's wow. just the way it is. Um, so, but that gap doesn't show up so big on the track because these cars are fighting to put the power down. Like you can go really fast on a thousand horsepower. You can go really fast on 1,200 horsepower. Um, 1,400 horsepower, car starts spinning third and fourth gear. It's hard to hook up. you got to have the chassis under it to, to take it. So, um, you know, I got on him about last year. Obviously, last year was kind of dull. Like, our sponsorship and our relationship has to um, be exciting all the time. We want to win races. We want to qualify number one. We want to be able to post that up every race. Number one. Number one qualifier. You know, we won this race. That's what we want. I like trophies. I want mm -hmm. to win the trophies. Last year was pretty dull. He didn't win a lot. Won World Cup. That was kind of the saving grace. Like, And he'd been trying to win a World Cup a long time. Yeah. So holding that Gold Cup was a big deal. It kind of topped the year off. That was a pretty dull, boring year for that car in sport front-wheel drive. And I got on him at the beginning of the season. We, we do our talks around PRI at the mm -hmm. end of the year. And I really wanted to start leaning on some development and uh get back into making horsepower and we did we worked on horsepower over the winter and the car's making horsepower and so, he he worked on stuff too it's not just us like yeah i, I don't want to sit here and take credit for anything okay we're a team and we want to work on engine stuff and they work on the car stuff and they do a really good job at it i think they're the best at it at what they do and um we asked for more power and we wanted to get the gap back and they put the gap in it I think today. Damn. Okay, everybody, we're gonna take a quick break for our sponsors and we'll be back in one minute. Yo, what's up, fool? Make sure you check out Downstar for all of your dress up needs. Get it popping over here. We have all the kits for the K series, the B series, the transmission, the mounts, the engine, the Toro, baby. We have the hardware for the seats, for the stereo. We got it for the speakers. We got it for the lug nuts. We got it for the air valves. We got it for everything, dog. So you make sure you hit us up at downstarring.com or you call us up, fool. You can even text us, lame, 818-937-3472. Just shoot us a text and tell us what's up, dog. I need some fucking balls in this bitch. Hit us up, downstarring.com. Hey, and if you got an Instagram, slide in our fucking DM at downstar. Wait, hit up the homie, Frank underscore downstar. He's the one that takes care of all the DMs. Hit that level up and shoot him a message and he'll get you all taken care of real nicely. So the stuff that's going on online, um, is it just because people are surprised or? Oh, they're calling it that there's something up, but I haven't even read it, man. We're like, I'm, I learned it, like, <laughs> I learned about it walking in here, you know, yeah. I saw the, I saw the tech stuff going on, but I learned about it. I'm walking in here, you know. And, and hearing about it so i haven't read it myself yeah i haven't read any of it i know it's hot right now it's crazy man it's crazy that there's that kind of following on social media and you see some of these posts going to the hundreds of comments and these lives and thousands of viewers on it and it's just the um the eyes are there but i really feel that their 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 attention is on the wrong thing and yeah, and you get a lot of people that put their opinion in there and really have, don't have the yeah. slightest clue what's going on. Yeah, you know? I think it's m more of that than anything. Oh, it is for sure. That's all of it. Everybody's got an opinion, right? Yeah. And they read something and then they take it as gospel and then they form their own opinion on it and then it gets passed to this guy and this guy and this guy and now it's, now it's changed four times before it gets, you know, it's so far from the truth. Yeah. Um, but, you know, everybody that's coming out to these races is working hard. All these teams are good. There's some teams out here with less, a lot less than that, going really, really fast. Their cars aren't as good. Mm -hmm. They don't have the engine program. They don't have this. And they're just good, hard workers. They're skilled guys, and they're making it work. That sport front class is awesome. There's a bunch of good racers out there. It's crazy. They're making pro mod type power on these little engines. You know, it's crazy. You make 14, 1500 horsepower on a, on a little four cylinder, and they're going rounds like boom, 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 beating yeah. the heck out of these things. It's, it's pretty impressive. That's exciting, man. Um, so on the subject of social media, have, have you guys 
went through that road where maybe somebody said something about you and you went through those hundred few days of Dude. nonsense way too many times <laughs> way too many times have we gotten involved in something on social media where we should have stepped back and we've very much learned that here lately step back it ain't worth it you're not gonna beat some of these people at you're not gonna convince them of what you're trying to say mm -hmm. they're some of them are just getting at you because they know it gets you yeah so yeah absolutely 100 percent have gotten into stuff on social media and it's gotten past social media to where it's face to face and it's gotten it's gotten into you know it's gotten very real mm -hmm. so um you can't let it get at you like that um but yeah we we get on all the social media stuff and it's very heated the race car ego thing the business thing and, and you you get all together and then they got their little you know, backup dancers in there freaking throwing stuff in and that gets you worked up and then you have to see each other and stand next to each other in the staging lanes at the track it's stupid <laughs> it's terrible yeah I, like it can be it can be uncomfortable um so i think it's something we've managed better the past couple of years because we've let it get away from us me especially i'm very passionate about this business mm -hmm. josh is very reserved very calm he doesn't give he could read that stuff and you know, just laugh it off most of the time, yeah. I can tell you right now, when somebody does something that ticks him off, he's in the shop working. Yeah. Anybody that thinks they're gonna outwork that guy, not gonna happen. Yeah. You, you piss him off. Anybody says something about four piston, all you did was put him to work. <laughs> yeah. All you did was put Matt Monday to work. Like those guys, you wanna you wanna test them, say some stuff about our about us, about our company, about our friends. They're gonna be in the shop working. And it's going to be working so that they can prove a point. So they work hard. We all work hard. So now, um, about sponsorship wise, how do you guys navigate around that? It's like it's crazy. Um, so I probably get fifteen emails a day asking for money. Wow. That's not exaggerated. That's maybe exaggerated down. Um plus text messages you know all the different forms of social media messaging personal pages personal instagram Oy. business instagram like all this stuff so um everybody thinks that sponsorships just something you do you throw money out there we're just regular guys with yeah. regular jobs <laughs> i i don't know what anybody thinks engine building pays yeah it's just a regular <laughs> it's a it's a regular job uh just like anybody else so um you got to put your sponsorship dollars in, in value, you know, in, into good places that are going to return, return for you. So, um, you've got to see a big investment. Well, you know, ROI is. Yeah. It, it, I know in big motorsports, a company would like to see like five times ROI. On, wow. On a sponsorship. Wow. And that'd be like a minimum for them to be interested. So, you know. Somebody, I have people all the time ask for a free engine. An engine's fifteen thousand dollars. How's that person going? I don't care if they can go out and sell some heads. How are they going to sell to people that I wasn't already reaching through other forms of marketing? Yeah, new, completely new blood. How are they going to get to them? Most people don't have the vehicle to get there. Stickers on cars don't do crap. Just because you have a couple Instagram followers, that doesn't do anything. You gotta engage. You gotta be. You know, it. I think it's hard to measure too. It's really, really hard to measure. That sponsorship is hard to measure. Yeah. And it's a business partnership. It's not just a sponsorship. There's way more to it. But, and that's what people don't understand. People think, oh, that car got paid this much money to run this wrap on their car. That is not. A, it's so far from the truth. It has nothing to do with that. Yeah. It is a business relationship that is mutually beneficial. It's a partnership. So, um, and that's just one. We do help a lot of other racers with stuff. Um, so, you know, that sponsorship thing's tough, though. Like, telling somebody no sometimes can offend them. I have developed a way to that I can probably, I hope, I hope that I can tell people and make it realistic for them. But at minimum, like, I want to see a bad ass sponsorship proposal and I want dollar signs on that thing I want it to tell me 
my return on investment and how you're going to get there. So uh, somebody listening right now, hopefully there's going to be a lot of racers and um, aspiring racers. Right. What would be your um, advice to them on, on how to navigate to get a sponsorship? Do it all on your own without sponsorship. And when you can do that, you'll start getting sponsors. You will never build a car. No one is going to sponsor a car that's being built. Like legitimately sponsor. Unless you have this wicked reputation of delivering, okay? Somebody that's delivered some serious stuff. Magazines, SEMA, like big stuff. Yeah, they can get sponsored for building something. You're nobody, you're not going to get sponsored for building something. You got to be out there winning. Mm -hmm. So put it together yourself, knuckle down, pay for it, and get it done. We don't have any sponsors. I I tried that once, did not like it. Yeah, I don't like owning anybody. So what? I want to be able to move. So is that what it was that you felt like you were obligated to a certain person, and it wasn't worth it for what you got out of it? Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, it's it's crazy that you say that because when I first got into. Um, you know the car show side of things that was my idea i wanted to get sponsored by companies i ended up getting sponsored by skunk too you know i got a, a discount or whatever and i had their whole catalog on the car and it worked out good but at at one point i kind of realized that that wasn't the way to go because as much as i felt that if i help somebody out and they didn't return the favor in some way of rather hearing their name all the time mentioning downstar or what have you you know just putting giving stuff out and never seen any kind of return on it it made me feel a certain way so the last time i built my uh my right hand drive and i was going through the whole thing i reached out to all the companies that i wanted to work with and i said hey man i'm building this car and i want to get this part i'm not asking for sponsorship so just let me know how much it is because at that point, it leaves me no obligation to have a sticker on my car, to mention them every week or whatever. Right. But we still build a relationship. And when people see my cars and see how they're built, there's maybe four or five brands that are involved in the entire build. And that's those are the guys that I go with because it's not somebody that I go with because they're giving me free parts. Right. It's guys that I'll go with like a Hasp or rye wire checkered sports something like that you know guys that i i've seen them grow in the community i see what they give back to the community and that's somebody i want to be part of and we've already built a, a relationship together so if i call hasport and i say hey i'm building this i need some mounds just let me know how much whether he says retail whether he sends them for free 50 percent, whatever it is it is what it is yeah. that's the car that i want to build yeah, that's a good way to go about it too. Um, but man, I get a lot of questions. Like we get so many, so many people asking. And a lot of them are people that are just building stuff. Or the, our, what people don't understand is that our our customer base is racers. A lot of them. So you know, people whoever wants sponsorship for the race car, they're going to do exposure. Well, that's who our customer base is. You are our customer base when you're asking for free stuff. That's what I'm trying to sell to you. That's you are my <laughs> yeah. customer. So it's tough but i had a sponsor one time um when early on and it was for a dollar amount i don't know if i should say it, it was for ten thousand dollars okay in cash and um which was a big deal at the time and what ended up happening in a, to make a long story short oh we lost an investor they gave us the five thousand and the, the second five thousand never showed up and so i figured this contract is null and void yeah because half the money didn't show up and then they wanted us to take the car to sema and it was going to cost me twelve thousand dollars to get to SEMA, and they got pissed that we didn't take it. And I'm just like, you guys can pay for the car to go to SEMA. That's fine. I love it to be there in the booth, but you're going to get pay for it to get there. You've already ha shortchanged us on the sponsorship. And then uh, a little later, we ended up doing an engine. So we built this engine for their other car and uh, shipped it out. It was an emergency. Got it out there. Never got paid for it. So I, I ended up losing on that sponsorship deal. I got five thousand dollars, and I lost ten thousand dollars. So wow. that was my that was kind of our end of sponsorship. It was a bad business deal, <laughs> and and so we really don't do it that much. We do, we want to work with companies that really like we can build our businesses together. We can build our brands together, and man, we do a good job. We do a hell of a job of marketing for some of these guys, and there's no sponsorship there. 
I can promise you that. Yeah. There's not a, I've, I've never, I've had, I've been on board with Ferreira for, um, man, I can't tell you since we started, I've not, I've not had one free valve ever. It's, wow. it's, we do business together and we make money together. So, and that's how we're going to keep it. So, and those relationships are great. They'll bend over backwards for us because we work hard for them. So, you know, and we sell a lot of product, but. So is there guys out there right now that, that you have sponsored that it's worked out in, in your benefit? Uh, oh, I'm not, not in your benefit. I mean, the, the business relationship that you guys built, it, it worked out hundred percent. Um, and there's guys that we, that aren't businesses that we've sponsored and it's worked out. They do really well for us. Mm-hmm. So, um, and sometimes the sponsorship thing is like they were my customer for six years and they bought a lot of stuff and I feel like they've earned it mm-hmm. and they've done a good job of proving who they are and proving that they can win and proving that they, they're they good people. That's a big, that's a requirement. Good people is a requirement. Yeah. Like I don't want anybody out causing a bunch of problems. So um, good human being, number one requirement. <laughs> After that, you better you got to knuckle down and win and I want people that work hard like I want people that are willing to work as hard as we are when adversity comes you got to be able to muscle through it so uh, yeah there's definitely relationships we've had that have worked really really well and we're going to stick with them for a long time same people but we need to tone back on some of them we've had bad ones man I've had stuff where I've sent people product or and then some or money and they didn't do they just that was the end of it you never heard back that happens a lot and it screws it up for everybody yeah 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 that happens even with us too you know that's one of the reasons why we don't do sponsorships but we do sponsorships but it's in our own way you know i i I see guys out there that um they're putting in work they're going out to shows and they're very passionate about what they're doing and they're not even asking me for stuff Right. But I want to be part of what they're doing, and I, I see that the excitement that they have when they they're able to buy a certain part, and they're oh guys, look at this that I ended up getting, and I remember being at that point in my life where my finances weren't weren't focused on spending money on car parts. It was whatever whatever I had left over extra, you know, and I, and if there was a company that seen how hard I was trying, how passionate I was. And they sent me some stuff just because just off of that, like how that would have made me feel. So that's kind of more of the way that we navigate things right. through that. And and we've seen that work out in so many great ways, especially some of our guys down in, uh, in, in Florida, those guys out there are just passionate for no reason, man. Yeah. They're going to shows every weekend, you know, and, then we started a relationship and those re- relationships just blossom and it, and it just takes me being in the community focusing on the community and realizing what what being able to decipher what these people actually have going on and then there's other relationships that i've built and it's guys that i've given a lot of stuff to that i thought it was going to turn into something but it was just them getting free parts right and at the end of the day the the guys that it, it worked out and we made a relationship that relationship is going to be way more beneficial than this just one package that you got and i think that that's something a lot of, that the general um community doesn't understand and should like i say skateboarding when i was young that was the thing if you're good enough to skate you put in your tape and if they sponsor you you're gonna get free decks every month you know and i never understood that the reason that they're giving me free decks is so i can go skate and everybody sees that i'm a good skater and i'm skating this deck you know i had that same mentality and i think a lot of people they whether it's skateboarding or whatever it is they they transition that over to this hey i'm going fast give me stuff right you know it's no you're going fast so that means that you're qualified to to be able to work with us but it that's that's not the whole oh, thing I, of it i i use i get more aggressive about it now i say they tell me how fast they are i say are you faster than sean ramey <laughs> nope <laughs> you got to take his job man that's all you, you got to take his job are you faster than brandon jefferson nope yeah. <laughs> take his job <laughs> it's up for grabs yeah you know be faster 
but it's more to it than that but that's a good response when when you can't you know are you the fastest yeah that's one thing that i would like to see change in in the community it's not only just the race community it's the entire automotive community i'm getting guys that are hitting me up for parts that aren't even into hondas yeah. i have guys that are sending me emails and i don't even know what kind of car they drive i just know that they want to be sponsored yeah. by us so that's one thing that i would like to see change but you being so involved in in the race community what do you see as some opportunities that that can be had um you know people have to get out and do it on their own and and whatever they're setting their mind to they need to get out there and do it and that it, just showing that that you can put it together on your own you know do whatever you got to do to put it together I, I can tell you right now there there are people that are out here racing every time that three days before that didn't couldn't afford to, to go to that race they figure out a way to get it done those guys are going to be at every damn race come hell or high water those are the guys that are going to get help and then there's people that always got an excuse and always can't make it you know it's there's always something mm -hmm. so positive attitude number one companies want to deal with positive people the bigger companies that can actually do something to help you out they want positive people they want people who are influential they want people who are gonna make their brand look good and not drag it through the dirt mm -hmm. um, that's the biggest thing um, you know I think just put in the time you gotta put the time in and then they'll come around and maybe they won't but you're still doing what you love do it because of that yeah and the the other stuff is just icing on the cake you know if you get help icing on the cake if you don't do it because you love it and uh, you know or find a way to do it find a way to make it work we were we were, we couldn't afford to race we figured out a way to f to be able to afford to race and, and now we do it just fine you know we w there's never a time that we can't come to a race because of finances um, it didn't used to be that way man I'd we used to really uh, struggle. We were saving up pennies to try to fit, put in the gas tank to come to a race, but it's not like that anymore. But we we worked hard. We found a way. You got to find a way. So, you know, I think there's a lot of opportunities in this sport for growth. It's a it's a big market, and um, there's a lot of opportunities for companies too. Um, you got to be smart about your marketing. But these events are great. I love these H Day events. Yeah, um, definitely. There's a lot of people that show up. You get a lot of exposure. It's not like going to a big, uh, let's say, a other type of event. Let's just say um, NHRA or uh, not NHRA, but like an NASCAR event. Like, okay. Um, those people aren't buying the parts that are listed on the cars. You know, they're not buying the parts. They're buying. You know, you got a different level of sponsorship there, but they're just they're there for the entertainment, right? Here, you fill the stands. Every person is a buyer. They all have a car. They all have a project car. They all have. They all want what is on the track or something similar for their street car. There's a lot of fans that show up to these things. I think World Cup we had forty eight thousand people. Wow. Okay. So um, that's forty eight thousand direct buyers. So there are opportunities for companies to market in this industry, um, and it's direct buying. So that's the nice thing. You're, you're reaching your your target buyer pretty pretty direct. It's nice. Um, because we're this is like the boutique thing. This is Target. We're very focused Target marketing here. Um, I like the H Day thing. They have a good thing going. They have a strong following and customer base, and we saw marketing value in it. Not just coming here for us, but we wanted to we wanted to invest in this class to try to keep it alive. At the time when Honda Day approached us, they had four cars racing in the class, and it was getting cut. There was no all motor. It was done. All mm -hmm. motor class was done. And we went on this campaign and it's not just us, it's other racers and other other businesses to try to rejuvenate this all motor class. And we did put up the money for the sponsorship for the class. That's where all the payouts come from. That's where the a lot of the stuff comes from. People don't know that. Um but it was purely out of the love for the class and not wanting it to go away. Well, the class is growing rapidly. All motors like the fastest growing class right now in the country. I know everybody's hyped up on the all-wheel drive thing. There's two all-wheel drive cars that show up to a race occasionally. Usually it's one. I don't know if there's any all-wheel drive cars here this weekend. I think there was one I saw okay, if I'm one. not mistaken. There was one at the last event too. Well, we got 
you know, 21 on motorcars last event, this event. We had some class drama, I'll be honest, man. We had some class drama that, that cut the field, and we got two classes now. So we got one class with nine cars in it and one class with five cars in it, and we got a bunch of them that didn't show up. So um, a lot of internet drama, a lot of class drama. It'll get sorted out. Yeah. That stuff will get sorted out. You yeah. feel so? Yeah. It Would by itself or somebody it's gonna intervening? It's going to get sorted or? out because anybody that's not here is not making money. You're not going to show up. You go. You might be able to miss this one. You miss that fall race. You're shooting yourself in the foot. Yeah. It's a big marketing opportunity, and it's the. This is the series that we have. That's a professional series that has points, that has payouts, that has. You show up and it's a professionally run event. You go to some of these other small events, one day events. You can't do all this stuff. You can't have this setup. You can't do. You can't touch base with the fans, like we can here. You have time to touch base with all the fans and your customers here. You go to those one-day events, man, you're in and out as fast as you can. It's everything you can do to hustle and get down the track and get your car loaded up and go home. They don't... The marketing value is not there. So, um, it will get sorted, 100%, because the racers want to race. And uh, that drama will get sorted out. Now, do you think that they let ego get in the way of maybe a smart business decision? Oh, 100%. I mean... It, I do too. Yeah. I, I'm completely guilty of that. Um, I'm trying to do better, and I'm trying to listen to my guys. Josh is good at keeping me cool. Yeah. Sometimes I want to say stuff. Man. I don't know. I've been Sometimes there too. Sometimes it feels yeah. good to say something, and then 15 minutes later, ah, I shouldn't have said that. Yeah. That's that wasn't good. <laughs> no, I've, I've been that, down that road so many times, and I think I, I look back now, and... I was saying this earlier, like, I don't regret I regret any of the decisions that I've made because it got me to the point where I'm at here. Yeah. But I just wish that I would have got to this point in a, a least harsh way. Yeah. My grandfather always said, grab this one by the smooth handle. <laughs> yeah. Right? And uh, <laughs> sometimes I wish I'd have taken that advice, you know, all the time. I try to remember it, but sometimes it's hard to remember. You get worked up. There, like I said, it's you're passionate about something. Sometimes you go in with all your emotion and where you should have been a little more reserved I, i'm guilty guilty yeah. as charged yeah no definitely man and um one quote that i always look back at is that a, a smart person learns from their mistakes but a wise person learns from the mistakes of others so what what i try to do to give back as much as i can to the community is to to put those mistakes out there that that i have made and show them look i decided to take this route and that's what happened down the road this is what happened because of the decision that i made back then was that decision was made and you know with with ego or you know pride or whatever it was and um i felt that that's that's been helping out a lot i've been getting a, a lot of um positive um positive results from that people just messaging me and just just hearing those kind of stories because a lot of people don't do that stuff you know they they don't talk about the times that they fucked up you know yeah. and, and to me it's it the place that i'm at right now like today is is not the best day but today is the best day of my life because i've had the best day of my life and everything else to this point you know i don't feel like right now i wish i could go back to change that yeah. because how i'm where i'm at today like there, there's nothing else I would want to change, but it, it was a rough road, and it wasn't a rough road that I necessarily had to go down. It was just lessons that I had to learn because the road that I was navigating down, there was nobody on there that even could have told me anything, that they did tell me anything. I didn't have any business experience, you know, and I think that's that's what's lacking a lot, and not only in in our community but just in in the world you know people aren't looking out for other people they're just looking out for themselves and um i've seen it a few times i've seen people going down the road that i've been down before and i'll shoot them a message hey man maybe kind of think about it like this and instead of telling them that because i'm i'm i want i want to tell them what to do i say okay because when i did it this is what happened so maybe take that into consideration but I, I totally get you man it's the the pride of it It just i think it is the passion so passionate about something that it just manifests itself into something different 
It does. You know, the same thing that drives you to putting in the extra work that's going to get you to your successful, you know, where you feel like is you've become successful and actually achieved something. That that same thing can get you in trouble. Yeah. That same passion gets you in trouble just as much. So, yeah, I've been down there for sure. Yeah, and I think what everybody needs to realize is that we're not huge corporate companies. We're pretty much... No what what you would want to be doing if you can get paid to just work on cars yeah all the time or right. be around cars all the time i'm i'm pretty much doing the same thing that you would be doing but i'm having to figure it all out like just kind of uh ease off a little bit sometimes you o- know? O- owning a business not o- is not always uh you know cherries and berries hell you got, no you man got the, you get, there's a lot to deal with that people don't know about and it, it always looks like oh these guys are just having fun sitting around building engines which is true about 90% of the yeah. time. We have a lot of fun. Um, and we make we do some silly stuff and have a really good time at work. But there's those days and there's those those challenges that come up in business that are, that are really tough. So, you know, I think dealing with those in a smart way eases up on your stress level and you can't let it eat at you. Um, you just got to make wise decisions. I, and old, old age helps. Yeah. Like going through those things, I wish I knew, you know, what I know now, I wish obviously I knew, you know, yeah. 10 years ago and could have handled some of that stuff a little differently. But again, would we be where we are right now if so, if I wasn't as vocal? Yeah, you know, you it, know it's what, really what it hard have, to call. Yeah. I mean, would it have, it, that, some of the stuff that we went through caused quite a buzz. So would we be where we're at? Yeah. Um, it's always, uh, it's always a toss up, you know, but I guess at the end of the day, you just got to do what you feel is right in your heart. And as long as you feel like you're OK with that decision that you're making, then you're not making that decision to, you know, hurt somebody or out of malice or something. You know, if you feel that's what that's the way that I try to move nowadays is if I feel that this is the right decision, then this is the right decision. Right. And whatever way that whatever happens after this decision or wherever I end up at, it is what it is. But because at that time I felt that that was right with all the knowledge that I've acquired and the the time that I took to think about it. And a lot of the time I'll, I'll reach out to my wife and I'll tell her the situation. I'll tell her everything. And she knows everything that goes on everything that is going on she knows everybody she knows everybody's names she knows every she's my publicist that's good yeah <laughs> she's so rad so i'll i'll tell her something and she'll she'll say oh fuck that or whatever i'm like yeah right and then i'll tell her something else and she's like well maybe this and I'm like, okay yeah you're right you know so it, it's good to have somebody like that around yeah i lean on my wife quite a bit for stuff to be honest like i'll she stays very away from the racing thing um man i can't my wife's never been to a race i don't think oh wow in in all these years so um she actually actually got fed up with it pretty good maybe you know eight years ago or so but it once the business started doing pretty well and obviously it became a legitimate thing that we depend on for food now um yeah (laughs) (laughs) she's she's more into it but sometimes she's a much better people manager and a lot more you know she has some really good ideas so i'll go home and bounce ideas off of her but man if it's industry related like advice drama stuff like that she does not care so we have this very big separation in interests oh really oh oh my god she does not care about that race car (laughs) crash and my kids are really into it so really it's gonna get weird oh awesome yeah they're ready to race they're ready. how old are they they're ready to get race cars uh my oldest just turned 11 so no way ready for a race car right now wow and so my wife's gonna have to get used to it but man i do i do lean on her for advice a lot of times because she's much better people manager she's worked in bigger corporate um atmospheres where they have to be much more professional than we are you know than we have to be yeah in in our small companies so um they have to be much more organized and follow the rules and she has some good advice sometimes this is how you need to handle this you need to go about it this way you know put this person on notice and uh give them their this is what you need to do and if you don't do it you know she's she's just really good at that stuff so but we don't she don't want to talk about race cars i can tell you that yeah it's good to have somebody that you could throw that idea around with because when i'm by myself and if i was by myself if i was single i probably wouldn't be here right now because (laughs) i would have been 
flown off the handle a few years back yeah in some situations you know but um man it's so good to talk to you bro yeah this, this was is, fun this was cool this is awesome it's it's so good to I, i've seen the brand so much you know we have we've built our relationship but you never really get to sit down with somebody for a long far, form conversation you know no phones involved no interruptions anything like that and that's that's one of my um my reasoning for doing the podcast is because as as humbly as humble as i am i know that i don't know everything and there's so much knowledge that you have or previous guests have and if i can pick their brain about a certain situation that they've been through or hear their stories and hear hear how how it ended up good or bad for them you know that that's only um knowledge that i'm able to take in and it just makes me a better person so that that's why i really appreciate you sitting down with me man no and, i appreciate and, the opportunity and hopefully we can uh I think if people keep an eye on us, they'll see us grow, and we're going to be getting into some bigger forms of motorsports for sure. We got some big deals on the table right now, and I hope we do everybody proud in our Honda community. Definitely, man. Already, yeah. To I this hope. point, man. So before we get out of here, um, what are some things that we could expect from you guys within the last few months that we have of the year? Um. Definitely, we, we have some new products, but um, just ex honestly, expansion of what we're doing right now, which is uh, more engine packages. We're going to really, like our focus, our biggest focus right now is customer service. Mm -hmm. We're trying to cut our lead times in half. Um, we move into our building in November, so that's a big part of it. So lead times in half, call times, we're trying to improve 100%. Like we want everybody to get picked up and answers right now that's gonna be hard yeah but definitely. that's our number one focus right now but at the same time we're continuing development so we're still working hard on development we just bought two new dinos like we we have we are investing in our facilities um so that we can continue pushing and making horsepower that's what we do we make horsepower and we we try to we want race teams to be able to buy something and use it not buy something and fix it yeah so um, I think expect to see growth in our customer service side and our um, communication side, biggest thing. Um, other than that, man, we're gonna be racing hard. We're gonna be racing harder. And uh, the harder, the more we get motivated, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of heat right now in the industry, okay? Yeah. There's a bunch, and the more heat there is, the harder we work. While you are sleeping, I am at work. I promise you that. If Hell you know, yeah. while these guys are sleeping and and talking trash on the internet, we're at work. I promise you. And the more they talk, the harder we work. And so that's the way all my guys feel. I wake up, I read something on my phone, and it's twelve thirty at night. I'm gonna be at the shop fifteen minutes later. Yeah. Working. And so that's what we do. And I think you can expect to see us stretch our legs a little bit and move forward and put a little distance here. I think we're going to stretch out a little bit and show what we're really made of here. That's exciting, man. Those are some big goals that you have. And um, everybody listening, one thing that I, w I want to point out is no matter how big that you think Four Piston is, you just heard that they have big plans going for the end of the year and beyond. So if there's something that you want to build, don't think that you get to a point and it's just coasting. Yeah. You're going to be hustling no forever, man. So if you, if you if you want to start something, I suggest just get on it now and get and get the boat rolling already. That's right. And uh everybody out here that you see that, you know, everything started from the planting a seed. Everybody everybody, no matter how big they are. Yep. You know, Google, Amazon, all that stuff. Started from an idea and a seed and somebody putting in some sweat and and getting turned down and getting shot down and getting getting beat up and doing all this stuff all that stuff they persevered and pushed and pushed and pushed and were never they never accepted no and uh made some smart decisions along the way too yeah man that's awesome bro so everybody listening right now where can they find you at you personally the business what, what? yeah we are in danville indiana out in the middle of nowhere <laughs> and, okay uh, but around a lot of racing stuff um fourpiston.com uh 
four piston cylinder heads on Instagram and four piston on Facebook follow us on social media even if you're not into Honda's or anything we just like to see comments and we post some cool stuff um, if you're into engines and stuff that's that's the kind of stuff we do so yeah awesome yeah. man Luke once again I I, I really value time because I know what it is especially to business owners with families and you know, things that are going on so we're almost about two hours man i Sounds appreciate good. i appreciate this two hours we're, we're man. just getting this night started i got a lot of people <laughs> i gotta go disappoint right now <laughs> all right guys thank you for listening so much this is episode 72 have a good night thanks guys